everyone. This is George Kuros, and this is the Three Question Series, and I have my special guest, Joe Sanfilippo, and he's actually the first one that's going to hear my new awesome <laughs> intro music. <laughs> All right, Joe, thanks for being here today. Yeah, and Joe Sanfilippo is actually a superintendent in Wisconsin, and uh, he's actually a huge, huge uh, Green Bay Packers fan, and I'm a, a Bears fan. <laughs> hey, George, can I ask you a question Please. about that? Are you, allowed to, are you allowed to play that in January? <laughs> You bear stuff. You said nobody plays stuff. Right. Plays bear stuff in January anymore. Whatever. Unless, you have a Rex Grossman jersey. Bears. <laughs> so that's actually it's, it's hilarious that that's the most famous Bears thing ever, and it's a Saturday Night Live sketch. It's not. It has nothing uh, to do with them on the football field. That's hilarious. Hey Joe, that mic, that mic. That's a hot mic over there, buddy. That's a that's a hot <laughs> mic. That's a hot mic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyways, uh, we are actually, um, we are just doing this new series and I invited Joe and he's making fun of my, my, uh, my very cool, uh, what is it? Roadcaster pro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. Anyways, uh, I'm glad that I could be on the, one of the first ones where you could like, try out all the buttons. You're like, it's Christmas time and you're literally a kid at Christmas. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so three questions, okay? So the first question, the first question that I've been asking uh, all these guests in this new series that I'm doing, uh, talk about a teacher, Joe, that inspired you, you know, as a kid growing up, someone that, you know, made an impact on you. So I think the thing that I can, I go back to my earliest days of, uh, of school and things that I remember and things that I, I don't remember about, about school. But one of the things I remember about school is uh, one, of my, one of my teachers, Mrs. Gebhardt, uh, was my third grade teacher. And one of the things, the really great thing about her was it had nothing to do with a academics, it had nothing to do with content, but Mrs. Gebhardt did two things better than anybody. The first thing she did better than anybody in the world was smile. And it, that sounds really ridiculous that that's, that, that, that that's something that I remember, but every morning, every single morning, I would walk into that room and I got into a lot of trouble at school, but every morning she showed up with a smile and greeted me at the door every single morning. Now, the thing is, I also knew that she knew that I was stealing candy and eating it out of my desk while she was doing the read aloud. I knew that she knew that, right? I knew that she knew that I would get in trouble on the playground and we'd have a conversation about it. But then the next morning, she always smiled. When I walked in, I always felt like I belonged. And the funny, the, the cool thing about her is um, I told a story about, about her. I told, you know, just almost kind of like this, where somebody asked me about a teacher that inspired me. And I, um, and I told that story on one of these little walk video things that I do. And my mom saw the video, and she sent the video to Mrs. Gebhardt. And I got a letter in the, in the, uh, in the mail from Mrs. Gebhardt, like, about a month later. And the minute that I saw my name written on that envelope, I knew exactly who it was from. Exactly. That's awesome. And it just kind of brought me all the way back. So I think uh, she would definitely be, again, I don't remember what she taught me, George, at all. But she smiled every day, and it made it, it changed the way that I work with kids because I try to do the same thing. I, I think that's for me one of the things I love is that you know teachers. I think about a lot of my students that uh, I had, and just I'm still cheering them on to this day. And I know uh, she's doing that. So shout out to Mrs. Gebhardt. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. Okay, second <laughs> second question. All right. So the second question is. Uh, talk about like an administrator that had an impact on you. It could be someone you worked with. It could be someone, you know, you had growing up as a kid. So who's an administrator that inspired you and why? Without question, the guy's name is Jim Clank. And he's the reason that I'm here, honestly. He's, he was uh, one of the reasons that I moved across the state to go to uh, Eau Claire when I got a, a job as a principal, my first principal job there. And then he came out to Fall Creek um, you know, after I, I was in Eau Claire for a while, but it's a town, a bigger town um, and a bigger school district. But he came to Fall Creek because he had started his career here. And when and when he came out here, things were kind of like all up all over the place. And 
they had had a lot of turnover in superintendents. And, um, and he, so he came out to kind of settle the waters because he had been here literally 20 years ago, prior to that, and he raised his family as a superintendent here. And uh, he got the job as a superintendent here. And then when there was a principal opening, um, I called and talked to him a little bit about it. And uh, he said, Joe, just come, come take a walk through the building. Just, just take one walk through the building. Because he knew what was going to happen. He knew exactly what was going to happen the minute that I walked through that building. I was going to have the same feelings about being in that space, growing my family in this community as he did 20 years before that. And when I sat down and talked to him about, um, you know, the opportunity to come and lead in this space, he said, uh, you know, you know, this is a really great place. It's a great place for my family. And I'm going to stick around for a couple of years, and then uh, maybe the superintendency is something that uh, that you'd be interested in. And six months into that relationship, he came into my office and he said, yeah, uh, so I, I'm going to go. <laughs> I said, what, so what Seriously? do you mean you're going to go? He's like, yeah, you know what? You're ready. You're ready. They're ready for you. Why don't we, we'll just go. It's, it's just time. It's just time. Let's just go. I'm like, you said you were going to be here for three years. You're just six months, man. I know I'm not great at math, but this is, that's not the same. <laughs> and so he's like, no, you're ready. Let's go. And he, he gave me two opportunities that changed uh, my entire professional career. And, um, and, I, and they were two of the best opportunities that, that I could have ever have hoped for. So I, I definitely thank him for the work um, that he did prior to me getting here and for being the reason that, uh, that I came out. And I, th I think for with administrators too, I think like some of the best ones that I've worked with have encountered, they probably see things in you that you don't see in yourself at the time, right? So I think that to me yeah, is, you know, part of that power of that story. So shout out. <laughs> All right. Last one. Last question. Okay. So you're, you're looking at your career and you go back yeah. to, you know, your first year. And I, like, I always think about how, if you're not like a little bit embarrassed about your first year, you're probably not that good right now, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> right. Cause it's like, and it's not saying you weren't good in your first year, right? But we should all be growing, right? We should all be growing. Yeah. And uh, I think that I look back at a lot of things that I, I learned, you know, now that I would wish I would have known when I, I first, uh, and, you know, one of the books probably, I, I feel like every teacher has read this book was uh, The First Days of School, right? That, like that was a book sitting, just waiting for a teacher. So if you can go back in time and give yourself advice, um, at beginning your career, what advice would, would that be? Well, the, the first thing is you don't know everything. So sit down, Sparky. You're not that big a deal. <laughs> you know, you just don't know everything. That's just the way that it works, you know. And I think and I think the thing is, like, you don't have to. But I think when you come into a new position, you're trying to establish yourself as somebody who should be there with everybody else because they may have been there for a while or whatever. And in doing that, you lose sight of what's really important, which is making connections with kids. And um, if, you know, I always wanted all the stuff in the right spot, right? And I wanted everything. I wanted, I, I wanted all the name tags in the right spot. I wanted, um, you know, the, everything set in the lockers. I wanted all the books. I wanted that moment of awe when the kids walked in to be like, oh, my gosh, look at this. We are in second grade. This is going to be the greatest thing of all time. And the thing that we have to understand about that is, like, the stuff – you know, the kids don't know if they belong in that room until they look in your eyes and know that they belong in that room. It's not about the stuff. So make sure that you take the time to just connect, and you'll get to the stuff when you get to the stuff. But um, but just find a way to connect in a way that you, you know, that you would want to be connected with as a kid. Yeah, I, I think probably the same, you know, both of us, if not many, is that the stuff I know about teaching and learning now is way more. And I, I feel that, you know, obviously I'm going to continue to grow, but relationships saved me at the beginning. Right. And I remember one of my principals, uh, Dave Pesek, he said to me, a teacher that's really good with curriculum, but not good with kids will not last as long as one that's the opposite. Right. And that right. just to build that bridge, but also I think to your point, there's a lot to learn, but also it's really important to understand that we have new teachers. And I think this is something that's really important for veteran teachers too, that new teachers come in, they bring stuff to the table as well. 
right? They bring great ideas. And so we want to be able to listen to them. I always have an issue when I hear like, oh, like that teacher doesn't know they haven't taught for X amount of time. I'm like, well, they might not know some of the stuff, you know, but they, they're bringing stuff to the table as well. Right. And I think that right. that to me is uh, really important. So Joe, thank you so much for being on the three minutes challenge. And uh, you know what? Go bears this weekend. <laughs> Right, that's you, that's you know, saying. well, we're not getting it. Did, did, did you really like that? Is that like circa '65? I don't know. Like I don't know. That from? I don't know. That actually might. It wasn't even from the '85 when they were good. That was like <laughs> you're talking about. That's like Halas time back there. Yeah, so that's a lot. Yeah. All right. All right. So, hey, Joe, <laughs> thanks for being on and outro. Thanks, man. <laughs> go, go crickets. <laughs> Come on, just do one cop for me, Joe. Do one cop for me. Here it comes. All right, have a good day. There's a delay, man. There's a delay.